Hello, and welcome to our webcast. I'm Amy Pendergrass with Moss Adams, and I'm going to get us started for today's session, 2021 Trends in the Retail Industry. And before we begin, I'm going to play a brief video. Welcome, and thanks for joining us. We're pleased to present another in our ongoing series of continuing professional education webcasts to help companies and individuals conquer challenges as they plan for what's next. Our presentation will start in a few moments. Before we begin, here are a few things to keep in mind. You can customize how you both view our presentation and interact with the presenter. For better viewing, close all other applications and turn up your speaker volume. You can also adjust window size and placement or enter full screen mode using the controls at the top of the window or dragging the bottom right hand corner to resize. At the bottom of your screen, you'll see a series of icons, each relating to a different aspect of our session. You can download the group attendance sheet and a PDF copy of today's slides from the slide deck and handouts widget to the right of the slide view. You can ask our presenter questions during the webcast by typing a question in the Q&A window below the slide view and clicking submit. We'll do our best to answer all questions during the presentation or follow up via email. If you experience technical difficulty during today's presentation, refresh your browser by hitting the F5 key. Today's session will offer you one CPE credit. To receive credit, you must meet the requirements as specified by the National Association of State Boards of Accountancy. You must attend at least 50 minutes of the session and respond to at least 75% of the polling questions, which we'll ask throughout today's presentation. To respond to a poll, click the button next to your answer. We'll track your progress and alert you when you've earned CPE credit. You can then click the certificate icon in the CPE progress widget to open a PDF file that you can save to your computer. Don't worry if you can't download your PDF certificate today. We'll email a copy to you in two weeks. If you're attending this webcast in a group, you must complete our attendance sheet to receive CPE credit. The attendance sheet is available in the slide deck and handouts widget. Please have all group members sign it and send only one sheet per group. Also note that CPE credit can be awarded only to participants registered as themselves and isn't available to participants who view the on-demand version. As a reminder, the presentation you're about to see isn't legal, investment, or accounting advice. We encourage you to seek the counsel of a professional service provider to apply this content to your specific circumstances. All right. And uh, we do have a great lineup of presenters with us here today. We have Frank Kaufman, partner and the retail national practice leader at Moss Adams. Darren Gaynor, partner at Moss Adams. Francis Tam, also a partner here at Moss Adams. And all of their bios and contact information is located in your console. And now I would like to turn the floor over to Frank. Thank you, Amy. It's uh, great to be back. I think this is our our 10th year uh, doing the Retail Outlook. And I want to welcome, I think it's in excess of 400 people uh, listening in and watching today. Hopefully we entertain you and, and provide some food for thought. As you can see on the screen now, you can uh, be perusing through the areas that we're gonna go through. And you know we have close to 20 topics uh, to get through. So we're gonna go rather quickly uh, there is a opportunity to ask questions in the chat room, so please do so. Uh, likely we'll wait till the end, but um, we'll do our best to get to everything today, and if not, we'll follow up with you later. Anyhow, let's get going. I promise not to do a tremendous amount of reading from the slides. You can take a look, uh, but some things we are going to pause a little bit on and, and delve into deeper Clearly, uh, you know, me talking about COVID at this point uh, is not news. Uh, we all have our fingers crossed for the vaccine and things of that nature. But a lot of things came out of this past year. Um, obviously, uh, the convenience, availability, and value uh, seem to be the key uh, in this uh, sort of as we go through the pan pandemic and, and driving uh, Convenience is the digital access and the last mile type delivery. We'll get into more of this later. Clearly, social diversity had huge impact on how brands marketed. And um, I think we all saw uh, quite a few examples of that. Here are Here's a page we're gonna dwell on a little bit. I want you to ponder these stats, uh, maybe because I come from a numbers background, stats fascinate me, but uh, you know, look look at the first one, right? 
44% up increase in digital. So uh, oftentimes when I was talking last year to clients or business associates, we, we were talking about what, what's been referred to as the K curve. You know, in, in economics, we've heard about the U curve and the V curve when there's some kind of economic setback. The K curve basically refers to, if you think of a letter K, some are going up, one leg's going up, and one leg's going down. And, and you can see what's happening here. Uh, we've never seen this kind of increase in, in digital. And, you know, we can discuss later uh, how much of that's here to say, I think, quite a bit. Um, and clearly mobile. We've got to be able to meet the customer where they are. Um, the last mile, as you see the 73%, everybody wants to know. It's not only do I get it tomorrow, but what time am I going to get it tomorrow? Where is it? Is it at a FedEx delivery spot, a UPS delivery spot? Is it left there? Is it going to come in the next hour? Uh, we're, we're demanding more as consumers. So as retailers, obviously, we have to meet that demand. Uh, you can see the big jump in, in Amazon. Um, you can see where brands are going, you know, with social media, which all of these numbers, I guess what I put them into is the bucket of acceleration. A lot of this technology, a lot of this delivery has been available. But, you know, now when we're talking about 80% of the people willing to go through self-checkout, you know, we've seen it at grocery stores. We've seen it at the, let's say, the home supply stores. Uh, but this is going to be standard, and it's going to become how we do things if we can't get delivered it to our house. So here are some of the areas that experienced tremendous growth in, in the last year, right? Um, clearly, the consumer electronics, beauty blew up in a big way. Toys were huge. And um, that's really what led the growth. As you can see, each of these categories had 50% growth. Uh, Home Depot, which I know some Home Depot folks are on the line today, so thank you for joining. Huge increase. Uh, unfortunately, your competitor also had a huge increase. However, if we were comparing dollars apple to apple, um, you know, Home Depot has, uh, in dollar terms, skyrocketed. I think um, there might be a weekend where I don't go to Home Depot, but uh, for those of you out there, thank you. I, I, like everybody else, has been doing extra things on my home this year. Um, aftermarket auto parts, that was an interesting one, and you'll see in a minute, uh, it's very logical. And then grocery, and grocery is a digital delivery business. If you're not in that, in your part, you're in the grocery world, uh, you're, you're losing market share. Here's an interesting study that we saw, I thought I would share for, uh, I know a number of you that are on this uh, call are also on the screen here, and you can see they took the 25 largest retailers in the U.S. and ranked them based on customer satisfaction and net promoter score. So, um, there's if if you are uh, number 25 on the list, it, it is not bad. You're the 25th largest retailer in the country. So I would not uh, think in terms of that way, but it, I thought it would be good information to pause a little bit. Now, let those of you who are on the uh, call kind of see this. Uh, what we do see is quite a few of the grocers that are in here and, and clearly in the home improvement world. So this is sort of the other end of the spectrum. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the auto aftermarkets has gone up because the auto dealers have had uh, just a um, very, very tough year. Uh, I think clearly working from home is is a big factor. I think I put typically I put eighteen thousand miles a year on my car, and I think I put three thousand this past year. So um, I'm not feeling in need of a new car. However, I might need to you know change other parts on it. So that's where we saw the increase in the aftermarket. Uh, good news, sort of, for the restaurant world. Uh, you know, the the new laws that are being passed through Congress are going to allocate additional dollars into the restaurant space. Uh, obviously, it's been decimated. Uh, you know, I think many of us have tried to support our 
our local restaurants and and do the takeout thing. Uh, but that's been hit uh, very very tough. You know, I didn't realize how hard hospitality have been hit. Uh, but when you look at this stack, nine times harder than the 9/11. Um, it's just staggering. I, I think we're all again crossing our fingers. Vaccines, whether they're going to be out in May or soon, we're not sure. But but uh, we all want to get up and get moving again. And clearly, uh, the malls who were, I'd say, going in transition uh, are ready. Uh, that transition's accelerated. So that brings us to our, our first polling question, which is, uh, you know, where are you going to be investing? And as it says here, you can choose more than one. So I will, I will pause now. If you could all respond, and we can see where you're thinking. And uh, Frank, while we're pausing for people to respond, I just want to let people know that um, to select your answer, you click the buttons next to the answer you choose, and then make sure you hit submit so it uh, goes through for your CPE. And then also want to remind people that you can uh, submit questions to the presenters in the Q&A window. And if we don't have time to respond during the webcast, we will do our best to follow up with you afterwards. Thanks, Amy. You're welcome. And it looks like uh, most people have had a chance to submit. So I will uh, show the answers here. Well, there you go. Uh, it, it's, it's good to see, you know, based on the information that I put out there, obviously uh, people are redirecting funds uh, all over e-commerce and then Getting to know your customer, the data analytics is key. And of course, cybersecurity, right? So as we venture into that world, there are um, bad people out there trying to take advantage. And, and it, we can see the other categories that are more focused on bricks and mortar are gonna take a back seat. And, and I think that's um, expected. I do believe we will ultimately get back to an omni-channel service platform where in-store is important, although I, I do think it's losing market share. So uh, thank you everybody uh, for participating in this. And uh, now I'll turn it over to Darren. Yeah, thanks, Frank. Um, first off, happy Women's History Month uh, to everyone out there. Um, you know, 2020 not only brought us a pandemic, but it brought us social unrest and brought things bubbling to the surface that we should have dealt with many, many years ago. Um, and retail is an active part of that. Um, what part are we playing in making sure those social causes are pushed forward, are not forgotten, uh, that we're making a difference in people's lives? And so one of the things that, that, that we took out of or that we're talking about today is how do we take that and how do we move that needle and how do we not only do something about it which is the right thing to do um but also to make sure we're telling people what we're doing so you've seen a couple examples here on the slide with gaps Sephora, and macy's as far as what they're doing and what we found is you can't be silent about what you're doing it's one thing to lead by example but people are going to look for it and you need to be um present and vocal about the movements, the push that you're making to push forward social diversity and inclusion. Inclusion is probably a better word than social diversity. What are retailers doing to be inclusive um, to, to all people? Um, as we shift, hopefully, out of uh, this, we, we get into what's the next normal? And what we found is, I won't read everything that's on these on this list, but the the, 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 got to do the basics well. That, that may mean you try something new, but you've got to do it well. You, customers are, 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 are expecting that we will hit the basics well. We will be able to deliver on what we say, um, that we will give them information that they need to make decisions to know when their product comes. 
The second thing that, that we thought was important is, is just what we have listed as community is the mental and physical health of people. Um, a lot of us on this call, a lot of our customers are feeling the drain uh, of, of a long pandemic, of social unrest, of a uncertain election and bipartisanship. And, and that creates a, a strain on the mental health of people. And so how are we meeting our customers where they're at? How are we providing them those needs and, and meeting those needs? And then the last thing is making sure that we put people first. You see there people, planet, profits, if you put people first, what we found is profits come. Focus on the people that we're serving, focus on the people, our clients, our customers that we're selling to, and profits will follow as long as we're vested in their personal interests. The second piece of the next normal is digital. Frank talked about it earlier. Francis will be talking about it a lot later. Um, how are we meeting our customers where they live? their their physical presence in the digital world how are we making it convenient for them right what we found in the pandemic is we people want convenience whether it's uh buy online and pick up in store or convenient pay or touchless um, they are looking for this digital world where um, everything is about convenience and as frank talked about before you see stat 44 percent increase in online sales um, you know, we've, none of us have ever been through a pandemic before, uh, where we've been through, um, recessions, uh, we've been through where people won't shop because they don't have money. We've never been through people won't shop because they can't go out. And that's something that was new in 2020. Um, obviously Amazon, huge bump, huge spike accounted for all the, a lot of the digital growth. Our, our, our comments here is. Um, you know, just like anything, necessity is the mother of all invention. So what are you doing to, to meet the client digitally, to meet the customer digitally? Because if you don't have a digital presence, you're missing out at this point. And when you, when you talk about that, you can see that 70% of retail companies are accelerating their digital transformation. I would say it's not only 70% of retailers, it's 70% of brands, right? What are they doing to reach the customers where they're at in this digital world? And big bump in BOPIS this year, um, will that be sustainable? We don't know. Will that come back down where people are more once last mile, like Frank was talking about, gets figured out? And we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about last mile a little bit later in our presentation. But how are we meeting the customer where they're at? How are we getting them uh, their products, their solutions, their services? So with that, we thought we'd bring up one more polling question, and that is, what, is, uh, what fulfillment options do you offer clients? And you can choose more than one. Again, uh, take a few minutes. Um, not only what do you offer them now, what do you think you're going to offer them in the near future? Now I've sat on a number of these. So for those of you who might have stopped paying attention for just a minute there, there's a polling question. If you want CPE credit, now's the time to pay attention. <laughs> All right, so um, many of you, uh, home delivery, free delivery. Um, it's interesting that the, the as little of BOPUS as there is, but a lot, I'm assuming a lot of people on this call are brands. Um, so the, the home delivery and direct to consumer uh, is important. And, and again, we'll talk a little bit about uh, last mile, which I'm sure is a pressure point for all of you who are doing C and D today. Um, so, uh, with that, I think I'll turn it back over to Frank and okay, Darren, thanks. You know, the, um, the interesting thing about that slide, hopefully you got a mental picture of it. We're going to go 
after this next slide into uh, sharing uh, a study of, of 7,000 um, consumers and what they thought was important. Uh, right now, you can see uh, that what we've called out is obviously behavior has changed. Uh, I don't know about all of you. I was somehow convinced myself that you know 2020 was a disaster, and when 20, 20, January 1st, 2021 happened, everything would be back to normal. You know the we'd get through the pandemic, all that kind of stuff. I even tried to have a uh, New Year's Eve party in October to accelerate that. Uh, uh, but then you get to this uh, fear of finding out what's next, and and it, it, it's a little bit um, sort of stagnating, uh, you know, with respect to the economy. And so you do have to drive people in, in different manners. And as um, Darren said, you know, the delivery is huge. Before I flip to the, the um, next survey, I want you to get in your mind what you think the number one item that drove purchases for 2020 was. And this was a survey that was done uh, basically in December of 2020. So um, pause there, and then we'll see you know, when you flip this if, if this is a surprise or if you've nailed it. So oh, it's one more slide. Sorry about that. <laughs> Teasing you. Uh, clearly, uh, convenience, availability, and value are, are what we're seeing standing out. Um, availability is an interesting one because, uh, you know, uh, there's plenty of ways of getting things delivered next day. Although during 2020, there were plenty of products that had two, three months worth of backlog. So, so there was uh, some uptick in, in physical stores, assuming you weren't subject to a closure uh, for people being able, I need it and I need it now. So here we go. Here's the number slide. So with all the delivery commentary, I, I do believe that uh, one of the things that we still are dealing with and, and we see the various uh, aid programs that the government has been pushing you know, people are conscious about the dollars they're spending right now. Uh, there's significant unemployment, and uh, many people were furloughed or had uh, wage cuts or things of that nature. So price actually turned out to be one. And how to look at this, like I mentioned, there's about 7,000 people that responded to this survey. So their um, price was the number one, and so everything else is relative. So 58% of... Uh, the number that said price also said or did say easy returns. Pretty sure we've never seen max policy as, as a driver for retail. Uh, I can tell you uh, I was fortunate enough to walk some kids to school this morning, and there's one parent that just won't wear a mask, and it bugs me, and I stay away. And so uh, I can tell you the grocery store that I go to, they uh, have the, the checker who is nearest the entry. Uh, they have a double duty. And I've seen them call out people as soon as they walk in without a mask. And um, if they're not responsive, everything stops. And they go ask the people to put on a mask or leave the store. So uh, this is why. Uh, it's one of the top factors in whether you're going to be in a store or not. Um, um, and, you know, it's, you know, nobody even voted for return by at-home pickup. So uh, curbside returns are important. I, I did find that, um, you know, the curbside pickup and the home delivery, in-store pickup, I mean, look at all these things. They're all all delivery-driven. Um, so it's, it's pretty amazing to me uh, how important, uh, you know, we focus on product. We focused a lot on how our associates treat our customers when we're in the stores. I noticed in the survey, uh, the polling question that we did, associates was not an area that you were gonna invest in, and you are gonna be investing in some of the delivery models. And, and um, I guess this is reassurance that that's what the consumer's expecting. So um, that being said, when, when you're involved face-to-face -face with somebody, right, we, we have to be uh, very much that connection, the personal touch. We understand how uh, to work with a customer. I, I can tell you I was on a um, sort of a chat this morning, and it was just a 
a um, literally, you know, we're going back and forth, but zero audio, zero video. And it was odd. When I get a phone call now, it's odd. I'm used to having Zoom, WebEx, or 10 other different platforms where you see us like this. And so I think the um, interesting thing is when we get in front of people, we, we have to know how to interact with people. So, so uh, we can't lose that. So although you're not going to plan to invest a ton in your associates, uh, realize that a lot of your associates are those that are in this sort of environment. And uh, your common sense greetings aren't common sense. So I do think you might want to rethink a little bit of, of that kind of basic training as it comes to the associates. Uh, this is this is something that's not new for us. We continue to see personalization. Uh, you can see some of the stats here about how well we're doing. Uh, you know, the amazing thing to me is the vast majority of people are still willing to tell you all kinds of things about them personally. You know, probably things that maybe they shouldn't uh, because you're their friend and you're going to take care of them. So one other way uh, that we're seeing the personalization happen is, is with the, um, the subscription models. And it sounds a little bit counterintuitive, but the message is really this. Look, every month I'm going to send you a package, and it's going to be something that we think you like. And the reality is sometimes it's not all that tailored to the individual, uh, but there's usually a note or something else, and it's kind of like a birthday every month that shows up at their their house. And so um, that is a, sort of a new normal kind of thing that, that if you're not into the subscription model and you can be, you, you maybe you ought to. I mean, let's, let's just take it in the grocery world. Um, you know, maybe 5% of what you're going to buy at the grocery store is different than what you did last time, which to me means 95% is the same. So if it's the same, and you're paying attention and you know what I want or whatever the consumer wants, hey, that means we have a connection. And occasionally you throw out, hey, you want to try something new? Sure. Thank you for thinking of me. It becomes this digital, um, and we'll talk more about AI in, in, in a minute, but it becomes this digital, digital connection that actually can be considered personal. So in more along the lines there, you can see a couple examples with Alexa. You know, um, you know what what scent should I wear today, Alexa? Yeah, Alexa can't smell, but somehow we're asking that question, and and it's responded to, and there you go, we feel good. So I think uh, Darren, you're going to take over the next section. Yeah, thanks, Frank. So we wanted to just talk a, a little bit about some of the things that we think will propel us into 2021 and. The first piece is, is influencers, um, and, and the basis of, of this slide is really talking about how are we telling a story? How are we telling a story about our brand? Um, you know, you've seen it when, when we were brick and mortar, how do we create an experience for the customers that come in the store? Uh, how do we create an experience or tell a story about the brand that's in our store? Well, this is really pushing the same thing to a digital platform. How are we leveraging the, the Instagrams of the world, the Facebooks, the YouTubes, the Twitters, to, to, to build that brand, to push that storytelling experience out there? Because that's how, to be honest with you today, we're reaching our customers. As Frank mentioned earlier, associates are still important. They need to be armed with the right information. If you have them, leverage them. And what I think we're missing these days that is going to come back is the human interaction. So are we, do we have friendly, I know this sounds basic, but do we have friendly engaged associates who are genuinely trying to help and serve customers when they come in? How, are they taking the friction out of the system? Because that's a separator from the digital. Digital, you're sorting through everything. If you have a good associate, they're going to direct you to write what you need and sell on the add-ons as well as here's what you didn't think you need, but you can't buy that without buying this. Something that is near and dear to everyone's heart on this call too is safety, right? 
And again, going back to the inclusion comments that I made earlier, safety is the same. Not only do you have to show that you're doing things safe, but you have to state, here's what we're doing to protect you. That's what people are concerned about these days with going into store. So our, state what your safety precautions are. Let people see them. Are we touchless? Uh, are we contactless? You can see the percentages that people wanted better hygiene, people wanted contactless ways of acquiring items. And I don't think that's gonna change for a while. Uh, brick and mortar, you know, it's changing. Uh, Frank alluded to it earlier with respect to, to malls. What are they going to look like going forward? How do they get reimagined? How are we using our brick and mortar if we have them? Are we using them for convenience? Drop in, pick up. Are we using them as distribution centers, mini distribution centers to get that last mile? Ask yourself, if I have the real estate, am I using it to my advantage? Am I leveraging it the way that I should be leveraging it? And then the biggest thing, we've all seen supply chain disruption this year. I mean, if you were in the outdoor gear business, you had months of backlog of not being able to provide to the demand that was out there during the pandemic. So how are you diversifying your supply chain, right? Um, how are we addressing those issues with providing opportunities and dealing with those? Are we utilizing specialists that help us analyze our supply chain and take the friction out of the supply chain. And the last couple of topics we're gonna to talk about is last mile, right? 53% of the total cost of shipping is that last mile. So how are we using it outside of UPS, FedEx, uh, Amazon, right? Are we thinking creative? Are we thinking creative like a door? Are we thinking creative using an Uber direct model? Um, are we using, uh, what, what's, what, what are the ways that we're using it? What's the technology that we're leveraging to get that last mile? So a lot of opportunity here in the last mile of, of, of carving costs out of, and friction out of the system to get it into our customers' hands. And it wouldn't be a retail update if we didn't talk about Amazon. So Amazon 38% per, up, um, Net profit up 84%, second behind Walmart. Um, again, they're going to go through some changes here in 2021. Um, how is the question is how is your brand interacting with Amazon? You know, are are you using them as a retailer? Are you doing AWS? Are you doing fulfilled by Amazon? Questions of how are you interacting with them, and how are you not, for that matter? Are you doing things that that are going to separate you, keep you apart? From, from what Amazon's doing. So that brings us to one of our, our uh, questions. We usually ask this every year. Um, how does your company leverage Amazon to sell products? Again, do you sell directly to them? Is it FBA, AWS? Uh, if you could take a few minutes and fill that out. Again, for those of you who might have checked out for a couple minutes during my section of the presentation, there's a polling question. So it's open now for you to uh, submit your answers. Thanks. Hi, Darren, it's Amy. I'm gonna jump in real quick and just remind everyone that if they do want CPE credit, they have to respond to at least three of the four polling questions that are popping up. And then once you've completed all the CPE requirements, you can download your the PDF of your certificate from the CPE progress window. Thanks, Amy, appreciate that. You're So it looks like about 85% of the attendees responding. We'll keep it open for another 10 seconds here. Amy, do you mind closing it out and let's take a look? All right, here are the results. Yeah, really interesting uh, results. Um, that's great. I think there's, uh, it's interesting in 2020, a lot of people, uh, you know, they say that, that uh, the pandemic accelerated 
digital and, and online by three to five years. And it looks like a lot of, um, a lot of you on this call have figured out how to go direct and do it yourself, leverage your own systems. Uh, congratulations on that. Very good. I think we're going to turn this over to Francis um, now to kind of walk us through some of the technology advancements. Thanks, Darren. So let me advance the slide. Uh, so I'm moving the slide, right? You guys can hear me okay. So we talked about some of these uh, emerging technologies earlier. In the first polling question, I believe many of you reply, e-commerce, number one, AI and data analytics is number two, cybersecurity is number three, where you're gonna invest your money in, in 2021. So very appropriate. AI, artificial intelligence, this has been around for many, many years uh, from the days when I was coding in the high school, chess game with a computer. But now, of course, with the uh, advancement of the CPUs, the processing speed, the, the storage we have is very cheap. The AI is uh, way beyond what we did back in the 60s, 70s, or 80s. Now, is, uh, the main thing is we want to eliminate as much uh, human intervention, human process as much as possible because humans are slow, right, comparing to machines. So AI, as you can see here, I'm not gonna read through every single bullet point, it's a lot of different applications. It can en enable self-service, customer mobile devices and scanners and all the stuff. Uh, so the main thing in the retail world is, as you can imagine, when people order, when people return stuff, when people ask for customer service, you know, <clears throat> applications such as speech recognition is very good, right? People say something, the computer will recognize that, hey, they, it wants this and will re redirect your question to the appropriate answers. That will eliminate a human processing of, oh, let me kind of decide where to send a question to. So as you can imagine, AI is very, very much enabling your, your environment, speed up the decision-making process and all the above, right? The natural language processing, when the computer wants to say something in respond to the questions, it can translate the response into natural you know, speech so that you don't have to have a person to say it. Uh, image recognition, facial recognition. So when somebody walk in, you can pretty much, I don't want to use, use a profiling, but basically, yeah, you can tell if that person is, you know, how tall, how well, how much he, he or she weights, and then you can recommend some products if COVID is over. And you know, those are good things to do. Real-time recommendations. Again, if you use computer to make these recommendations are way faster than humans. So AI, one thing that uh, people you may not know is, what is AI? It's nothing more than machine learning from machines from learning from machines. Rather than, you know, in old days when you program something, you got to have one person to program, oh, these are the things you, if then else, you do this, then you do this, you do this. Whereas in AI world, if you have multiple layers of machines learning from machines from machines, it will be a lot faster. <clears throat> and then in my world, cybersecurity world, virus and spam prevention in, in our world these days is uh, they, we, have, we have a lot of what we call zero day viruses. In other words, they haven't even found a patch yet. They haven't even found any kind of solution, so to speak. So these, you know, uh, a zero day thing, if you have AI, it will prevent these things. I wouldn't say 100 percent, but at least faster detect it and then find a remediation a lot faster than in the past. Automated stock trading, you know, that's understandable. Rise share services, those are all kind of, you know, understand you, you saw in the news, uh, uh, um, Tesla, Apple, they're all testing uh, rise share services with no drivers, right? And then some of the simple application, household robots, you know, if you have an iRobots, uh, Roomba, vacuum cleaner in your home, that's a very sim simple form of AI. It actually can map out your home, your home and then plan its route to clean your your room, right? So autopilot technology, all of the above. As you can imagine, a lot of these technology, if you can connect them, it will make your entire business process a lot quicker, enable decision-making process a lot quicker, and then rec make recommendations and you know solutions to your customers a lot faster. You don't have to implement all of them, depending on your budget, depending on your ROI, right? You may want to implement certain pieces of it, right? Voice recognition in terms of your uh, voice response unit, when people call in to return goods or order goods and all the stuff would be a good thing to start with, right? <clears throat> Tax is a new channel. That's again, is a very given. Hopefully you can see that, uh, you know, last year, especially a lot of uh, uh, information is being provided by tax, using tax, uh, uh, you know, whether it's a multi-factor authentication, whether it's providing new information, coupons and whatnot. 
Why is that? Well, because people are now getting used to short messages to the point. They don't even have the time to read emails anymore. They want to see, hey, there's a text. It gets the uh, people's attention right away. And then it, hopefully the message is very short and precise and concise and saying, hey, this is what you want to know. And it's out. Oh, yeah, this is what I want to know in two sentences. So very good. And then the millennials and Generation C, a lot of them are used to doing tax messages rather than phones or emails. Um, so that's uh, pretty much if you have a teenage uh, daughters and, and sons, you probably see it at home a lot. Uh, cybersecurity. So this is a big part of my world. I do cybersecurity every day. So cybersecurity is always the top of all the retailers. Why is that? Because you have a lot of ingress points, I call it, whether your point of sale systems, whether they are your um, web portal, whether you have web applications or third parties, there are a lot of ingress points of information, sensitive information, financial information. So as you make it easy for your customers, right, to send in the information, as you can imagine, you also open your door to all the bad guys. Well, hopefully you have some, you know, good locks and good safeguards to prevent them from getting in without blocking them. Right. So as you can see, the average cost of a data breach is 3.86 million uh, this last year. But these numbers, again, I'm not going to read them to you. They are probably underreported. A lot of people don't even report it because they're afraid of repercussions, be afraid of bad publicity. Right. So this is uh, all very, very uh, conservative number. <clears throat> Why are the retailers at risk? Well, behind every transaction is a plethora of data coming in, like I mentioned before, customer demographics data, personal data, financial data, credit card information, all the stuff, right? And then if you have a POS system, in average, just last bullet, if you have a, one person working for you, the ratio is five to one. In other words, you may have five ingress points, five devices you may have to protect. As you can imagine, unless you have a very good system of patching, protecting these, uh, all these devices, even if you protect one, you may not be able to protect all five. And in our world, you are as good as your weakest link. So this is a very important that you want to keep in mind. Um, so the 10 things you want to do, right? Um, again, I cannot list all the good things you need to do. I call it good IT hygiene. You may, might have heard this uh, from this webcast I had in the past. So this list of good IT hygiene has grown quite a bit. You know, as we all know, we are if not all of us, what was it? It's eighty percent of us are working from home. Or people are afraid to go out to buy stuff. They don't want to go into a store in person. So, in other words, everybody's doing connection uh, remotely, and therefore, it also enables the bad guys to do some of the things that they may not be easily do in the past. But now it's easier because in your world, you want to make it not too many barriers for your customers to connect, right? And then in the, in the same process, you also kind of lower your threshold of uh, security. You know, change your password, those are given. Your IoT devices, whether it's a mobile app, whether it's a, uh, you know, a wristband or something like that, you must protect it because every one of them has a default password and ID. So hopefully you change all these so that, you know, people cannot easily look it up in YouTube or uh, uh, Google and say, what is the default password and user ID, right? A lot of these uh, uh, Wi-Fi access points you're using right now, they all have a default user, default user ID and password. Keep all your antivirus and system patches up to date, you know, getting all the frequent patches and all that stuff. So technology, you know, so if you can afford it, upgrade your technology as much as you can. Use the latest and greatest, right? Um, conduct application and network security, pen testing, penetration testing, social engineering, awareness training. That's a very good point because, like I said, you're only as good as your weakest link. Usually, not all the time, humans are the weakest link, right? Machines, if you program a certain way, it will you know, react, respond to a certain uh, situation the same way every single time. Check your cybersecurity insurance. Not all the insurance are the same, right? The small prints have, will make a big difference if you have a breach. Uh, implement real-time monitoring services. So, you know, make sure you keep your monitoring devices up to speed, up to date, you know, because once you find it, it's maybe it's too late, at least you know. Hopefully you can patch it, you can contain it as soon as you can. Keep the tone at the top clear. You know, if you are the CEO, CFO, make sure you evangelize the importance of uh, cybersecurity because if you don't, people will take it lightly and they're not going to pay attention to it. With that, Amy, has another polling question. All right. Thank you. So our last polling question is how concerned are you that your company will experience a cybersecurity attack? A, low, B, moderate, or C, 
Hi. And we'll leave this up uh, for a little bit so that everyone can get their CPE. And also, if you would like a copy of today's slide, you can download them from the folder that says slide deck and handout. And we will also be sending them out tomorrow via email along with a recording of the webcast. And we'll leave this up about 10 more seconds so that everyone can respond. This is a good topic because uh, every day you see all kind of news. Uh, just lately, Microsoft got a news bulletin that their Outlook webmail is uh, vulnerable to vulnerability. About 250,000 of the customers are affected. So those are the things that you probably want to pay attention to. Good. All okay. right. Thanks for that. Great. So moderate. So that's good. So hopefully this will raise your awareness of uh, cybersecurity. This is a very important uh, topic. You don't want to appear in the news, right? So this is one thing you want to pay, you know, very good attention to. So the last topic in my area of data analytics, so uh, this is a very good topic because as I mentioned before, hopefully you can utilize machine as much as possible. There are data analytics is nothing more than, well, how are you going to take all the data that you're getting in terms of your, when you're doing your, 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 uh, business and then what do you do with the data hopefully you can use the data to help you to make decisions right so with the increase of number of e-commerce we talked about that in your first polling question you want to invest a lot of money in the 2021 in e-commerce okay the amount of data available has skyrocketed however with so much data available well how, how are you going to determine what type of data is more important than the other ones and where to find it and what to do with it right the data as you can see on the list many of you have point of sale system, website, supply chain, you know, smartphone. And if you happen to you be using blockchain, that's another source of information that you want to protect, you want to analyze as well, right? So they all intertwine and hopefully you can use that a lot. I mean, there are many types of data analytics. There's descriptive and analytics, diagnostic ones, predictive, prescriptive. Each one of them helps you to make decisions, find out what's wrong and then make the right decisions and find out what the actions that you need to do so hopefully this will give you a you know not a very deep understanding but give you some ideas what you can do with data analytics and this is a very important part of your e-commerce your digitization of your you know business world that kind of thing with that i'll turn it back to you frank all right actually uh, i'll take you want to take this I'll one take over yeah, I'll take over for a second. Uh, so those of you on the call who know me, uh, deep down, I'm actually a tax partner. So um, we had to throw in some uh, some items related to some opportunities out there for you. Uh, I like to have, I like to save clients cash in their pocket. And so uh, some of the things that you may or may not have heard of, obviously the PPP, um, there's two rounds of it. Hopefully you've applied if you, if you qualify. One thing we wanted to bring to your attention and hopefully your uh, accountants, uh, your CPA providers, your advisors are talking to you about the employee retention tax credit that was extended. So it, it expanded uh, the ability for you to take up to 50% of qualified wages of an employee as a payroll tax credit. So basically $5,000 per employee who makes $10,000 or more. And it was extended not only for 2020, but for the first two quarters of 2021. So if you want to learn more about that, uh, feel free to reach out to Frank or I or Francis on this call. The, the couple other things we wanted really uh, to highlight, and we've talked about this the last couple of years on the, on the retail update is, is understanding the proliferation of, of online sales and the ramifications of the Wayfair case back in 2018, which gives you economic nexus or in English, a sales tax filing responsibility if you meet certain thresholds. And so as you go direct to consumer, as you sell more online and digital, be aware of the pitfalls that you're potentially falling into with respect to sales tax and use tax and digital income tax. And also the last thing, and this is more of a 2020 issue, is, is as we've been working more remotely where are we creating income tax filing obligations based on where our employees are now uh, performing services because they've decided to live in a different state than the home state 
uh, that they've typically lived in. And just making sure you're having those conversations with your provider, providers and advisors. And if they aren't up to speed, we are more than happy to answer those questions for you. Frank? Yeah, Dar Darren, that's fantastic. You know, one thing I want to add on about the employee retention tax credit is uh, when that was put in place and the PPP was out there, uh, basically you couldn't do both. If you were going to get PPP loans and have them forgiven, which most of the clients we've dealt with have had 100% forgiveness because some of the rule changes, uh, you could not get the employee retention tax credit. Well, the rules changed uh, just about 60 days ago, and so you could actually get both. You can't count the same dollars, but you can get both. Most importantly, what we're seeing uh, a lot of our retailers sort of miss is there's rules about the number of employees, whether it's 100 employees or 500 employees. If you get over those levels, maybe you can't get it. However, what's really important to uh, us that are dealing directly with the consumer is many of you have been subject to governmental uh, closures where you've been mandated to shut down for a period of time. That actually overrides the rules with respect to the number of employees. So if I just encourage you to look at it one more time, we've had uh, multiple clients get seven digit refunds back where they thought they weren't uh, um, available to them. So uh, it's been a big thing really in the last 60 days, uh, some big wins for some of uh, the companies out there. Uh, so just real quickly, you know, as Darren mentioned, he, he is a tax person and I'm an assurance person and Francis IT. Uh, for for our, our clients that are in e-commerce and virtually everybody in retail has got some platform of e-commerce, either 100% or some significant portion. Uh, these are a bunch of the different services that we do. So as you know, Francis mentioned cybersecurity, he's uh, our lead for cybersecurity, but we have teams in all these areas. So as you're thinking about needs, um, feel free to reach out to us. We, we actually do more than you know, financial statements and tax returns. So uh, with that, Amy, I think we have a, a good deal of questions that have been asked that we're happy to answer. Yeah, so we have several questions that came in uh, through the Q&A window. And the first one we can start with, uh, maybe you can answer this one, Frank. It's with the recent passage of the $1.9 trillion stimulus bill and the Fed's balance sheet soon to grow to over $8 trillion, uh, what is your panel's outlook on inflation? And what advice are you providing to your clients in regards to pricing strategies for 2021? Yeah. Okay. That's that's uh, that's that's a big one. Um, so I, I guess what I'll say is this. You know, uh, correct. Uh, uh, almost two trillion dollars uh, going through as we speak. Uh, there was a two point three trillion dollar uh, you know economic stimulus package uh, back in uh, March April time frame, right? And so, you know, the economy is still reeling. And so, uh, am I, I? I'm not terribly worried about. Inflation. I, I know uh, there's various comments at the Fed. I I think there's still uh, there's a, there's a fear out there. It's unknown, and uh, I I believe really positive things are going to happen in say Q3, Q4 this year. I do think that we're going to catch up with the uh, vaccinations, the pandemic. I think I'm a little worried that some, I think things are opening a little early. But once we get to a stage where most people have been vaccinated and uh, doors are open, so to speak, across the country, I think there are some pent up demand. I did see one of the questions somebody was asking of me about how do you account for the savings? Well, I know I didn't go on the vacation that I normally go on last year. That's sitting in the bank. I want to go on a bigger one this year. I think there's pent up demand. So I do think there will be um, a pretty robust economy in the in the third and fourth quarters, assuming we get the uh, the vaccinations out there, um, and and um, it's also going to have an impact on taxes. And we're seeing we're seeing all the proposals uh, that are trying to be pushed that are that are going to raise tax. And so we've dug ourselves a hole for sure. There's there's a hole. I think it's appropriate to support the economy and the people that are out of work. Uh, I just hope that we don't try to get it all back through tax too quickly, right? So uh, I'm 
I'm not terribly concerned about skyrocketing the inflation at this point. All right, thank you. And then this one uh, is more geared towards Francis. So in my is migrating and hosting my IT environment in the cloud safer than hosting it in-house? Yeah, so that's a good question. I mean, there's no right or wrong answer in most cases because depending on what you buy, where, how you configure the environment, um, you know, even in AWS, there are different types of options you can buy. If you pay more, they have a lot of native controls, native uh, um, security is built in. If you pay less, they have a basically just a bucket, a container. You can put anything you want. And then once you put something in there, you also want to configure how you're going to connect to maybe a web application, maybe a third party. So all of those things, you have to put it into consideration what kind of controls, what kind of security you want to put in place to make it safer or not. It doesn't matter what you host in a, in a cloud environment or you know put in a closet within your environment. The thought process, the con concept is pretty much the same. Depends on how much security and controls you want to put into it. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, so going down the list, it looks like we have one. Uh, how do you account for the savings rate per consumer going up? And I don't know if Darren, if you wanted to take this one. Sure. Yeah, and as Frank alluded to earlier, I think there's uh, several reasons for it. One is people couldn't do things that they wanted to, but more specifically, whenever we're in a time of uncertainty, people tend to pull back on um, spending uh, and 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 go into more savings. So we've lost, we've we've had a tremendous amount of job loss in the U.S. Uh, so the uncertainty creates a pullback. But as Frank said, what what we what we have yet to see is what's going to happen in the third and fourth quarter of 2021, uh, specifically the fourth quarter of 2021, and then into 2022 with respect to this pent up demand. Whether it's um, luxury items, whether it's new car purchase, you know, some people have had the funds and they just didn't do it because it's not a good look uh, during the pandemic. And so, will that pent up demand uh, be spent uh, on consumer products, you know, in the fourth quarter of 2021 and into 2022? All right. It looks like we might have time for one more question. Um, what is Moss Adams' future commitment to inclusion and diversity? It's an interesting one. I don't know. Uh, Frank, did you want to take that one? Yes, yeah, sure. I, you know, uh, a couple things. Uh, we, I guess, the first thing I'll say is is we've we've always been commu committed to it. Uh, however, this year there's an incredible amount of awareness. Every year at Moss Adams, our, our CEO comes out with a word of the year, and for 2021, it is inclusion. And there is not a single meeting that doesn't have inclusion and diversity on the agenda. Uh, the entire partner group uh, just spent in a, 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 just recently a very long training session with a lot of interesting questions. And, and the reality is I, I've sort of lived my life with a, a philosophy of doing the right thing, but I've, I've come to learn that that's an easy thing to say, but sometimes you can't get others to do the right thing. And, and so you got to get hopefully them to do the right thing, even if it's sort of for the wrong reason that they're doing the right thing. And what I mean by that is, is oftentimes if we can make a business case for somebody to do the right thing, uh, then they do it and now they're doing the right thing and maybe their perspective changes a little bit. And I can tell you one of my uh, fairly significant, purely digital uh, retailers, um, when uh, there was a lot going on in, in, I'll say, May, June timeframe, uh, they got really blasted in, in social media over the lack of diversity uh, with respect to this happened to be a um, consumer products company and, and um, say the models that were on their website were all uh, homogeneous. There was not any diversity going on. And uh, for most really good um, retailers uh, on the digital platform, they can see their sales every minute. They know what's happening. And I will tell you, in a matter of two days, 
uh, their, their run rate dropped by about 80% because of what was going on. Uh, the good news is they reacted and they said, you know what, they're right. Uh, we just have had blinders on. They changed their entire presentation and it took about a week, but within a week uh, they were setting records uh, for daily sales. So um, unfortunately, sometimes you have to go to the business case to get people to do the right thing. But in our firm, we're looking at every level, every opportunity, across any way you wanted to slice and, and make sure that everybody's getting a fair opportunity. It is, it is the word of the year and uh, we focus on it every day. All right, thank you, Frank. And we are at time, so I'm gonna close us out here. Uh, thank you, Frank, Darren, and Francis for a great presentation today. And thank you to our audience for your participation. If we didn't have time to answer your questions, we will do our best to follow up with you after the webcast. And as a reminder, if you attended today's presentation in a group and would like to receive CPE credit, you must complete the group attendance sheet found in your console. If you participated as an individual and met all requirements, your certificate is available to download now in the CPE progress window. We will be emailing those out to you within a few weeks should you have difficulty downloading it now. And here is a link to an online survey for today's presentation. Please take a moment to complete the survey as your feedback is very important to us. Thank you for joining our webcast. We hope you'll join us again next time.